Question 12 says, a styrofoam box has a surface area of 0 0.79 meters squared and a wall thickness of 2 centimeters. The temperature of the inner surface is 5 degrees Celsius and the outside temperature is 26 degrees Celsius. If it takes 8.5 hours, 8.5 hours for 5 kilograms of ice to melt in the container, determine the thermal conductivity of the styrofoam. The answer should be in watts per meter Kelvin. So it's asking for the thermal conductivity, and thermal conductivity is a unit uh, used to uh, to explain or to drive uh, to figure out what the power is, the watts, the power. So the thermal conductivity comes from the definition of power, um, which is uh, so you have uh, you have joules per second. So the joules per second, whenever the joules are are heat, so whenever the joules are heat, whenever the energy transferred is heat, um, you the thermal conductivity is the the proportionality constant that um, equates the area times the change of temperature over uh, so the change of temperature over the change of uh, the change of uh, distance. So we have in our equation we have the area, we have the change of temperature, and we have the the thickness, the, the change of x is the thickness of the styrofoam. So we have all of that information. We don't have k, but we do have another bit of information. We have that that this ice, and we're going to assume that the ice is is at zero degrees Celsius. And so it is not going to warm up or or anything, but it is going to just completely melt the ice. So it's going to go from ice at zero degrees Celsius to water at zero degrees Celsius. So the question then becomes how much thermal uh, how much uh, how much thermal energy, how much energy transferred in the form of heat is required uh, to melt all that ice? And so the the thermal energy required is equal to the mass of the ice times the times the latent heat of the ice. So and again we have everything else in, in the problem we have the number of the the time so the time it gave us was uh, was basically eight and a half hours which is thirty thousand six hundred seconds so we have that we have the area we have everything else we just have to make this equal to this so the mass times the latent heat is equal to Q so we just gotta set up our equation now as the mass times the latent heat over s instead of having q over s and we we could say that this is going to be equal to the this uh, thermal conductivity times the surface area times the change of temperature over the over the thickness of the styrofoam and we, and all we have to do it's asking us for the the thermal conductivity so we just have to solve for the thermal conductivity. This is really easy to do, so we're going to we're going to reorganize the right-hand side of our equation. So the mass times the latent heat over seconds is equal to the the uh, thermal conductivity times a times change of t over change of x or the thickness. So the change of temperature over the thickness. So we've got now the a there and we can just multiply both sides of this equation by the reciprocal of our fraction so we, we would multiply this by by the change of by the change of x over a change of t and what we would get is this would all cancel out and on the other side of the equation we would get mass times latent heat times the change of x so times the thickness over the seconds times the area times the change of temperature is equal to k and so the most important thing to do at this point is to make sure that all of our numbers are in the right units. And so it's asking for the mass, and the mass of ice is 5 kilograms. The latent heat of ice, of water at freezing, is 3.33 times 10 to the, to the fifth. So I write 333,000 joules per kilogram. 
Now the, the seconds is where we, we have to do a little bit of converting because it gives us 8.5 hours over 1. We've got to multiply that over uh, by 3,600 seconds per 1 hour. And so we should end up with, um, with our time. So this is, this is L, this is M. So our time, lowercase t, should be approximately 30,000 600 seconds and then our our area it gives us and so it gives us 0 0.79 meters squared and that's in the right units and then the change of time I'm, I'm sorry the change of temperature it gives us the outside temperature as as uh, 26 degrees and the inside temperature as 5 degrees and so um, the the final minus the initial and the reason I'm calling 5 the initial is because it's what's keeping the ice from absorbing any heat. And so the, this is trying to go into the ice, this temperature is. And so when it can, if, if it were allowed to come to complete equilibrium, however many days that would take, the, this would be the final temperature of the, of the water if... Uh, if the temperature outside stayed the same. And so uh, the, the change of temperature is 21 degrees Celsius. It asks for the answer in units of Kelvin, but what you have to know is that the change of temperature in Celsius is equal to the change of temperature in Kelvin. And so this, it doesn't matter um, that we have, it's, it's actually okay that we have this in Celsius because it converts directly one for one. Now, don't get that confused that Celsius does not equal Kelvin, but every time Celsius temperature goes up 1, Kelvin goes up 1. And every time Celsius goes up 2, Kelvin goes up 2. So the change of temperature is always going to be equivalent. So if you go ahead and plug those numbers into the equation, you should get that the, uh, the heat, uh, the, the thermal conductivity constant is 0 0.06559 six. So this is a it's a zero. My zeros have been looking like sixes lately. So it's zero point zero six five five nine six. And that's watts per meter Kelvin. Change the uh change the equation from Q over S to to mass times latent heat over S or over S. It should be yeah per second, so that's right. So this is going to equal the proportionality constant times the area times the change of temperature over the the thickness of the styrofoam. And then we want to solve for the proportionality constant, the thermal conductivity. And so uh, we just have to basically reorganize this side of the equation so that A is, is in the fraction. So we'll get the mass times latent heat over the seconds is equal to K times A change of t over change of x. So this is uh, this is an a. Um, and then we can multiply both sides of the equation by the reciprocal. So if we multiply this side by by change of x over a times change of t, and we multiply this side by change of x over a, that I'm gonna, I'm gonna redo that, over a times change of t, then what we end up getting is that the mass times the latent heat times the change of x over over the over the area times the change of temperature o times seconds is equal to is equal to k and so the main thing from uh from now on is to make sure that your all of your units are in, are in, all of your numbers are in the right units